Okay, so I make computer games. Uh, one of the reasons I like computer games is that I always like making models as a kid and playing with toys. You know, for me, the idea of playing with something, putting your hands on it, constructing it, interacting with it, is just like an amazing way to kind of learn about things. Uh, and also, games are very different than almost any other form of media in that they're inherently malleable, you know, both by the player, by the community, etc. And so, the game I'm working on now is roughly based on Powers of Ten. It's called Spore. Uh, it's actually based around a set of editors like this, that basically you grab things, can manipulate them. Uh, this is a creature editor, so this game is really kind of about the origin and future of life. So on this editor, what we're doing is basically manipulating a little spine and building the torso of this creature. Now, as I add parts to this creature, it'll actually start exhibiting some behavior. And I'm actually kind of defining how this thing is going to live and work in this environment. So I'm going to put some parts on the guy here. He starts coming to life. So I'm determining things like what this creature would eat, uh, how it would survive. And we want these tools to be very open. So one of the goals for this tool was we wanted somebody to be able to basically recreate what a Pixar artist might take weeks to do. And so the computer basically has to analyze whatever you create in this editor and figure out how it would animate, how it would move, etc. Put a few more parts on this guy, give him some wings. There we go. Now the computer can also analyze the surface of this creature that I built and then uh, in one click actually run these algorithms. And so these are procedural texturing algorithms. And once we have a creature we like, we can put it into a little test environment here and see how it would move around. And so no two creatures will kind of move or behave the same in this. Oh, how's that? Did it cut out? Okay. So no two creatures will move or behave the same in this game. It's entirely up to what the user designs. So here's our creature. Uh, we can see what the babies would look like. And there was kind of a cutified version of what I've made. But basically the idea here is that in playing the game, we want the players to be able to create all the content for the game. And so this is one of many editors. And in fact, everything you see in the game is actually creatable by the players. We can also kind of make them run little animations here. So these are like some little dances they can run. Now when you're done designing your creature, you can bring it into the game. So I'm going to pop back out of this. And the game actually starts at the single cell level, and you work your way up through evolution, through intelligence, uh, and out into space eventually. So this is our creature uh, actually living in the world. And you'll actually play through every generation of this creature's existence up until intelligence. And there are different strategies you can play. You can have an herbivore, carnivore. You can be very social or very aggressive. So the game doesn't really force you, of course, depending on what I interact with. Might, might be quite big enough for that guy. But I have to find others of my own kind to mate and reproduce and get back into the editor. I do that with social calls, but that might attract predators, like over here. And I can try to be social with them and see if they respond. Oh, okay, they're not responding to that. But essentially what happens is we're actually playing through the evolution of this creature, and I'm going to pop back out and show you. Eventually what happens is you build a civilization of these guys, and eventually work your way all the way out into space. That's good. And at this point, we wanted to give the players not just little toy creatures or toy civilization, but an entire toy planet to kind of play with and interact with. And so we have a simple little... Uh, planet here. Now this stage I actually have a spaceship and I'm moving around the galaxy. I can visit different worlds. I can terraform them. They have uh, very simple little food webs and geologies. So here's one that has some life on it. And what's happening at this point is I'm actually interacting with all the other players content. So this is one world. And all the things on this world were created by other players. So as you create stuff in the game, you know, either buildings, vehicles, races, or even entire planets, it gets shared with all the other players automatically. So basically, you end up with an entire universe of places to visit and interact with. So we can pull back from our home star here. 
This is kind of the local area around our home star. We wanted to have basically a little toy galaxy showing all the things that you might typically see in Hubble images, you know, roughly at the same scale and frequency that you would actually encounter in real space, things like planetary nebula, black holes. As we pull further back, we see the entire galaxy. We actually have several million unique worlds here, no two of which are the same because they're collectively being built as the players are playing the game. And that's my quick demo. Thank you.